Welcome to this morning's service of worship coming to you live from the United Church Winchester. It's a joy and a delight to be able to join you, albeit virtually, for worship once again as we uh, draw close to God during this time of trial. I'd like to welcome all of you, whether you're uh, watching or whether you're listening, whether you're on your own or whether you're with other people, please know, as I always say, that we gather together as the whole body of Christ. We are one people worshipping God together. Just a couple of words of, of notices before the service begins. Um, thank you to all of those who have responded to the survey about reopening the church building for services. If you've not yet responded to that, we really, really appreciate your view, but so many of you have. I'm sorry that I've not been able to respond to each of you individually. There have been many, many emails coming in, um, but all of your uh, messages have been received and all of your, uh, your, your preferences have been noted. Um, and that's just been a really, really helpful exercise. So thank you for that. And we will be in touch uh, in due course to, uh, to communicate about where we go from here. And with that in mind, I want to pay tribute in particular this morning to our safety group and our property team. I think because nobody's down here at church to see it, um, we don't really understand the level of work that's actually going on, the level of time and energy, the complexity of the work involved um, to actually um, understand and then make the arrangements for the possibility of reopening the building for all different kinds of things whether it's hirers or live at home or church services or whatever and I just think it's it, it's really important to be so thankful to that group of people I'm not going to mention um, them all by name because I'm sure I would miss somebody out but we know those who are working so hard and I just want to reiterate, let us put our, our trust and our faith in their wisdom and their, uh, and their understanding of the rules and, uh, and, and allow us all in that to be guided by the Holy Spirit to find the best way forward. But my thanks on behalf of the whole church to all of those working so hard on our behalf. So welcome to worship once again. And as it's the first Sunday in the month, we will be including the celebration of Holy Communion during this service. So if you'd like to have some bread or some wine or a suitable alternative available, then uh, you can share in those uh, in that sacrament um, uh, uh, when the time comes and I will direct us through that. So if you've not shared in this way before, don't worry, just have some, uh, some bread and, and wine or, or an alternative to hand and you can join in that and all are welcome to do so it doesn't matter what your what your faith background what your traditional denomination if you'd like to join with us in uh, sharing in the body of christ together then please feel very welcome to do so so our service will begin in a few moments so let us keep silence as we calm our minds and focus on god's unfailing presence with us all wherever we are. We join in our call to worship and I invite you to join in the responses in bold. We are hungry. Come and feast on the bread of life. We are thirsty. Come and drink the water of life. We are weary. Come and enjoy God's refreshing grace. We are hungry. We are thirsty. We are weary. Let us enjoy the feast that God provides. And so as we think about 
that feast which God provides. And as we think about sharing Holy Communion later in this service of worship, we're going to join in singing our first hymn. It's Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You. And if you're following in the hymn books, it's number 611. God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. In a moment of quiet, let us confess our sins before God and seek God's forgiveness. extravagant God, forgive us when we do not value the riches of your gospel, when we cling tightly to what we have and do not share it with others. Forgive us when we are anxious and afraid and do not trust you to meet our needs. Faithful God, forgive us that in joy we may, take, we may take risks for your kingdom. Amen. Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. So let us be assured of God's forgiving presence in our lives and give him thanks. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Our readings this morning are brought to us by Dorothy Lusmore and Joe Pellet. Dorothy's going to be reading from Psalm, 7, Psalm 17, and then Joe is going to be reading our Gospel reading from Matthew chapter 14. So uh, our thanks to Dorothy and Joe for bringing us our readings this morning. A reading from Psalm 17. Hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer from lips free of deceit. From you, let my vindication come. Let your eyes see the right. If you try my heart, if you visit me by night, if you test me, you will find no wickedness in me. My mouth does not transgress. As for what others do, by the word of your lips, I have avoided the ways of the violent. My steps have held fast to your paths. My feet have not slipped. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my words. Wondrously show your steadfast love. O Saviour of those who seek refuge from the adversities at your right hand. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. When I awake, I shall be satisfied, beholding your likeness. Reading is from the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew 14, verses 13 to 21, feeding the 5,000. Now, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. Let us pray. Eternal God, who longs for us to know all good things and to walk along a peaceful path, open the eyes of our hearts that we may see the way to life. Open our ears that we may hear the truth and open our lips that we may praise you this day and all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So following on from our Gospel reading this morning, I've entitled this sermon, And All Were Fed. And All Were Fed. Or, as it is in some translations, they all ate and were satisfied. And I just want to dwell on the simplicity of that phrase for a moment, and all were fed, or all ate and were satisfied, because what it reflects to me is one of the most basic human needs, one of the basic needs of all life, and that is to feed 
uh, in the physical sense of the word. I'm not just I'm not talking about spiritual uh, nurturing here at the moment. I'm simply talking about the physical need to be fed, to have food. Um, in a busy family environment, I'm all too aware that sometimes um, parents, for example, um, are way down on the pecking order. They make sure that the children get fed first, then they make sure that the pets get fed, uh, and then occasionally they, they, they think, oh crikey, I'm actually starting to wilt myself. Um, I'm getting rather hungry. Perhaps I actually better feed myself. And it is a reminder that it's one of those most basic needs that we need to eat. We need to have food in order to live, in order to breathe, in order to have our being. It is the most basic need. And it reminds me of a story that um, one of my URC colleagues told me um, on moving to a new congregation. Um, so this was my, uh, my, my friend Cliff Bembridge, who when he moved down to Buckland in Portsmouth, uh, was um, and, and was ministering there. One of the groups that actually came in to uh, use the building um, was was uh, had a particular outreach ministry to uh, the homeless. And what they would do is they would provide food for the homeless. But their methods of doing it, interestingly enough, were that um, they had to come in and they had to listen to a service or a message or or, or a preach before they were actually fed and that was in a way one of the conditions of them receiving food they had to come in and be preached at in order to have food and this was something that um, Cliff found very bizarre and I can remember him reflecting on it with me um, you know it, because to us it it just seemed so wrong they were hungry and they just needed to be fed if they want to stay for a service afterwards or to to hear a, a, a word being preached or to have a prayer said for them, fine, all well and good. But the need, the basic need, was that they should be fed. Now, there shouldn't be any conditions to that. Um, and that was something that he fought very much to, to change so that it, it, when, they, when they did come in, they were simply fed. Um, and that that speaks more volumes than any kind of conditional arrangement for uh, for for eating don't just preach at them don't preach at them just feed them I can remember that phrase being used don't preach at them just feed them just feed the hungry that is the preaching of the gospel in itself and so we find ourselves with another um, well, we're told hungry group of people. I'm sure there were some that were hung hungrier than others. Some were probably quite well fed, um, but others were possibly starving. And we have this whole multitude, this whole crowd that have gathered uh, to hear Jesus. And we can just imagine that they might have been listening to Jesus for some time and they're under the heat of the, the midday sun or however you want to picture that, uh, that, that setting. But the hunger starts to set in and of course i don't need to retell the story the the food is found from somewhere a little boy with five loaves and two fishes is the one that brings that meal forward uh, to, to to jesus and it's jesus that brings about that miraculous feeding of so many people and you sometimes think you know that that little boy you know maybe you know pat lunch uh, packed by his mum or dad, you know, and, and uh, you know, off he goes um, to, to, to listen to the words of this wandering prophet um, and, and what was to become of those fish and, and the, that bread um, that was packed into his basket that day. But always the question in my mind when reading that uh, story is what's the real miracle? What's the real miracle? Are we to believe that only this child brought food to the party? Seriously? I don't think that's the case. I think there was enough food for everybody all along. Many would have brought food, but were probably unwilling to share it. Maybe there's something about um, that in our own walks 
in our own lives at the moment. Uh, we've uh, it's certainly at the beginning of the lockdown or before the lockdown, when people were panic buying food, there was an element of protectionism there, an element of I must make sure that there is enough for me and, you know, blow the rest of them or words to that effect. I must make sure that there's enough for me. I must make sure that I don't run out of food, that I don't go hungry, that I don't run out of toilet paper or hand gel. And maybe there was that sense of protectionism in the crowd as well. I know I've got some food, so I'm going to be okay. Um, maybe I can see that there are some other people who are hungry, but, you know, I, I, I need to make sure that I have that food first. And yet it's the child at the invitation of Jesus that broke this unsaid boundary uh, about them and us, about property, about me first. It's the child that broke this unsaid boundary. It was a child who answered Jesus's plea. Again, this is a wonderful reminder, you know, where we hear elsewhere in Matthew's Gospel, you know, let the, let the children come to me, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, the wonder of children, what they have to teach us in their innocence. And we must look um, to children, to young people, to inform us and show us the way, and not presume that we grown-ups have got it sorted out, because we certainly don't. In fact, you know, look at the mess in a way that we have made of the world. How can our children, our young people, inform us and guide us to make better decisions for everyone? The wonder of children. But I think this is where the real miracle is. I think people saw that child being sacrificial and it prompted a change of heart, a change of attitude in their own lives. And as a result, he prompted others to do likewise. No preaching, no big message. He just simply made sure that people were fed. And because he did that, others saw it. Others felt it. Others heard the voice of God in their hearts, felt the Holy Spirit stir within them and were prompted to share their food also. Now, I don't mean to kind of disrespect the, 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 the imagery of uh, the, the parable, uh, not the parable, the imagery of, of that story, of that, um, of that account of Jesus feeding the 5,000, you know, and, and the wonderful image that we have of Jesus breaking the bread and, and then all of a sudden, you know, there, there are baskets which just don't ever empty. But personally, I have to say that I prefer an interpretation where actually food just started appearing from the people themselves as they started to share. I find that more miraculous. I find that more magical than some kind of uh, magic trick. Again, I don't mean to respect, disrespect the story, but I think the true uh, miracle is how a child giving, just simply giving, cause other people to be less hard of heart, to, 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 melt, uh, to melt those hard hearts, to give. And then they found that there was enough for everyone. Nobody went hungry. All ate and were satisfied. When they let go of their protectionism, when they were prepared to be sacrificial, they realised that there was enough for everyone and more besides. And maybe Jesus did, you know, bring about a little bit of extra food as well through some miraculous action to make sure that there was that abundance. But I think the miracle is maybe, maybe goes, the, the, the metaphor is, 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 is more than that. It's about giving of the heart and the change that it makes in us when we respond to Jesus. It reminds me of my trip to Zambia. Um, some of you may know that um, one of my previous churches 
formed a link with a church in the Lusaka Presbytery of uh, the uh, United Church of Zambia. And to establish that link, uh, myself and a, and a group from that church went over there um, for a couple of weeks and basically got to know them. Um, and it, one of the one of the memories that sticks with me is how we would go into uh, one of the uh, the compounds, and you know, you are looking at, you know, think of townships, um, and uh, you know, think of really quite basic um, living environments, dusty roads, uh, ramshackle. Uh, housing, outside water, outside toilets, all of those things. And we would go in and we would visit, and sometimes visit almost, you know, um, uh, unbidden, you know, the, our, our host there would just say, oh, we must go and visit so-and-so. And we would go into their house and um, and they would they would be very gracious and all of a sudden the, 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 uh, the host would, would disappear. And out would come tray after tray after tray of food, you know, and I'm thinking that this must have been food that they'd been putting away um, to sustain themselves and their families potentially for days and weeks. And here us fat Westerners come in um, and, you know, they're, they're just feeding us all of their food. They didn't hold back. That's the point I want to get across. They didn't hold anything back. It was their job just to feed us. They didn't preach to us. They didn't uh, say, you know, they didn't say, oh, you've got it good and we've got it bad. They didn't try and drive any point. They just fed us. And, um, and they didn't hold anything back for themselves. Are we, at times, and for very understandable reasons, I'm not wanting to be critical or, 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 um, or uh, in any way, but for understandable reasons, are we at times guilty of holding back? Of holding back what we have that we could give in the service of others, what we could give to others, and what we could give to God? Are we guilty of holding back in our worship, in, in, in our hearts, what we truly should bring to God in everything that we do. Are we at times risk averse, guilty of protectionism, guilty of giving to a, up to a point, but you know, obviously make sure that you know, I've got enough to, 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 to cover my own needs. Are we guilty sometimes of holding back the kingdom of God? keeping it locked away in our own hearts, lest we become vulnerable to its sharing. Let us become more like children, ever eager to share our store of grain and fish, ever eager to share the bounty of God's kingdom with all, and let us be encouraged by this story that when we do that, when we encourage others to do that, all will be fed. All will eat and be satisfied. Amen. Thanks be to God. We come now to our prayers of intercession and as is our custom, I'm going to hold our prayer bowl before us. And I just wanted to uh, raise a few prayer concerns that we might um, uh, spiritually place in this bowl. And I encourage you to think of your own prayer concerns, situations that you're aware of that you want to place into this bowl as well. We think in particular of the family of Valerie Wright following her passing and we pray for all the arrangements that need to be made and we pray for the family and for uh, the community up at the Grail and for ourselves as we mourn her passing and also as we celebrate her life 
and all she has achieved for God. We lift before God Alan and Brenda Rickman, Alan with some uh, sad news um, and we pray that God will give him and Brenda strength over the weeks and months ahead. We pray for children and young people, those that have been able to go back to school and those who haven't thus far. And for the fact that now we're in another period where children are at home all the time, it's the summer holidays, in case you didn't know. So for those who are um, at home looking after children, for the children and young people themselves, as they have this time off, and as they prepare possibly to go back to school and with all the uncertainty of that we lift them before God in our prayers and we pray in particular for uh, the arrangements for Green Week 2020 Green Week is still going ahead and we're still going to remind this community this city of the importance of, uh, of our, our awareness of the climate and and our world and how we can sustain our world and so we pray for all of those who are involved in preparing and planning for Green Week. And into this prayer bowl we place all our own prayers, the prayers of our hearts, the concerns of our hearts. So let us pray. Lord God, our creator and provider, you give us all we need and much more beside. Thank you for opportunities we have to make a difference in our world, to share what we have and what we believe with those you have given us. We can never have enough baskets to contain all you give us. As we think about the miracle of Jesus feeding so many people, we recall that baskets are full of holes. Lord God, make us people through whom your blessings leak out. And thank you that as we share your word and your love, they will grow in us. May we be people of the kingdom, whose passion is to fill the kingdom with all those who will come to be fed. Thank you for Jesus, who shared with us the gift of his life. Give us your Holy Spirit to enable us to share Jesus with others. Lord God, our loving, giving Father, we bring before you our needs and the needs of all those around us and all those in our hearts and minds. Those who feel they have nothing to share and ourselves as we encourage and value them. The communities which need to learn how to work together, starting with us, our own commitment and involvement. those who feel they must hold on to hold on to what they have praying that we may demonstrate and reflect your generosity the many who do not know the love of jesus that doesn't count the cost that we may share our blessings and our message of good news We remind ourselves of that story once again. And as the crowd became quieter, we are reminded that all were fed and satisfied. Today we are fed and satisfied. All have been blessed by being in the presence of God. We too have been fed, renewed and touched by our generous, loving God. 
so let us go out to share him in our world. In Jesus' name. Amen. So as Jesus taught us, so now we pray, saying together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. So we now come to the part of our service where we will share Holy Communion together. So if you haven't already got them to hand, then now is the time to have uh, bread and, uh, and, and the cup ready for you to share um, in the way that it, it, it is most appropriate for you. There will be responses on screen throughout our celebration of Holy Communion and I invite you to join in with them as they appear. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia! The peace of the risen Christ be always with you and also with you. Alleluia. We say together, Lord and giver of every good thing, we bring to you bread and wine for our communion, lives and gifts for your kingdom, all for transformation through your grace and love. Amen. The table of bread and wine is now made ready. It is the table of company with Jesus and with all those who love him. It is the table of sharing with the poor of the world with whom Jesus identified himself. It is the table of communion with the earth in which Christ became incarnate. So come to this table, all who seek to follow Christ, Come, it is Christ who invites us to meet him here. So we come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have renewed our hope in life that cannot be destroyed by death. We thank you for calling us to witness to the resurrection. Lord, keep us faithful. Accept our praises now, Lord God, as we remember Jesus, who the night before he died at supper with his friends, took bread and gave you thanks, broke it, gave it to them and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body given for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup and gave you thanks, gave it to them and said, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for everyone, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. In joy and awe we stand before you and proclaim. Dying you destroyed our death. Rising you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Come freshly to us, living God. Open our eyes that we may recognise you walking with us. Open our ears and minds that we may hear and understand. Open our hearts that your love may flow through us and bring the blessings of new life to all we meet. For you are the God who makes all things new. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, present with us now as we do in this place what you did in an upstairs room. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and wine, that they may be heaven's food and drink for us, renewing, sustaining and making us whole, and that we may be your body on earth, loving and caring in the world. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. So in a moment we will share Holy Communion together and what I will do is I will take a piece of bread first and I encourage you to do that and if you're on your own just take the bread yourself. If you're with others make sure everybody has a piece of bread and I will wait a few moments so that all have that bread uh, to hand and then I will bid and we will all eat together. And I just feel that this time this is such an important symbol of our unity, of our communion in the body of Christ together, that we all eat as one. And then likewise, uh, once uh, we have eaten the bread, I will hold up the cup and I will again wait for a bit of time, wait a bit of time so that you can uh, uh, get that uh, ready yourselves. And then I will bid and we will all drink together uh, from the cup of our Lord. Look, here is your Lord coming to you in bread and wine. Come now, the gifts of God for the people of God. body of Christ, broken for us. the blood of Christ shed for us.
we say together. Lord Jesus Christ, you have put your life in our hands. Now we put our lives in yours. Take us, shake us, remake us. No longer is what we have been important. It is what we can be with you starting now. Amen. So to close our service, we're going to sing our second hymn. This time it's Come, Let Us Sing of a Wonderful Love. And if you're following in your hymn books, then it's number 443. share in our blessing together. Go out into the world rejoicing in God's generous love and may we be fed by the living God who makes, feeds and sustains us all. And the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.